So our first speaker this morning, um, I, I'm so appreciative that she could fill in for Hemet. And I only told her about this maybe four days ago. I don't know. So she, she put together a presentation super last minute, and it was not her fault. It was all us. And uh, I'm so grateful. So let's all be very, very nice and gracious for Monette. Good morning. I'm not quite as peppy as Lauren this morning. <laughs> yes, no one is. <laughs> Today, the part of Hemet Meadow will be played by Monette Richards. <laughs> um, my name is Monette Richards. I'm on the board of directors of Secular Woman. Uh, I'll give a little history. I was actually raised by hippie wolves, um, which is only partly not true. Um, as my parents were getting older, they were moving away from their religions that they were brought up in. Um, so, uh, and I was the youngest of three. So as the story goes, um, my dad had my oldest brother baptized in the Catholic faith because that was the thing to do. And then the middle brother, he had baptized because of Pascal's wager, well, you know, what if it's not up to me to deny him, you know, whatever. And then he baptized me in the bathroom sink because he was high, so. <laughs> I had to get permission to tell that story, by the way. <laughs> but consequently, I've been an atheist all my life. But being in the movement is a very, very new thing for me. Um, you know, a couple years ago when the Tea Partiers were being all, you know, pissed off that they had a black man in office and America betrayed them, and they thought that the best way to keep the Taliban out of the U.S. was to impose their own laws on women. Um, and so... <laughs> We had the stream of anti-choice laws coming in, and the women were organizing, and we had feminists at the state capitals, we had feminists online, and they were all talking, and they were organizing, and it was really great. So I started getting into uh, a lot of the feminist movement, because I had all this energy and all this passion to make things better. And absolutely no offense against now, because now has done some wonderful, fabulous things for women over the years, it's never been my organization because there is so much woo everywhere you go. Um, the women just, uh, well, not, not just the women, the women and the men, but you had the, the goddess kind of stuff going on, and, and it's just never been my place. Um, so then I at least could work with them, but it wasn't, you know, my passion just didn't quite fit in. And uh, I'm in IT, so everybody knows that means I sit around and read blogs all day. <laughs> and I started coming across these really, really fascinating blogs. You know, Ferengula, Skeptic, The Gateway Drugs. Because <laughs> you start reading those, then you go down the rabbit hole, and you find all these other great names and fascinating reading. And uh, so there was this movement, this thing that was so awesome that, that fighting against um, all of the stuff that women were going through from the religious right, worked right in with fighting for atheism. And this was just brilliantly the place for me. It was just, you know, I found home, yay. And um, reading the blogs, I got an idea of, you know, just watching the things of, of the building. You know, we were building up to Reason Rally at this point. Uh, it hadn't quite happened yet, but you could feel it. You know, people were talking, people were getting loud, people were, were organizing. And then someone said, guys, don't do that. And there was all this, I, it, it, what women were facing at that time when Rebecca had that elevator ride and uh, she did that little video where for three, you know, three seconds in the video she said, guys, don't do that. And uh, the men just decided that was a horrible thing in the world. Women were already going through uh, sexism on a level that was just consistent throughout the U.S. I mean, it's, it's the U.S., our culture. Um, women have glass ceilings in, in everything they do. So even in skepticism, atheism, secularism, you had that same kind of thing going on. You had the same stupid sexist jokes of back to the kitchen, make me a sandwich, you had the same um, 
level, a number of uh, leaders on boards, secular women actually did a, uh, went around and got all the numbers of the leaders of the organizations and the number of women on the boards. And I don't remember the actual number on the boards themselves, but leaders of organizations was 29% women in the, in the major, major organizations. Um, which actually is slightly higher than what we have in the government right now, but it's fairly consistent. So then we had this kind of uproar going on um, with not liking that women were saying things about it, saying, hey, there's a problem. Hey, there is sexism. We're, you know, getting told to shut up. We're not being listened. Our concerns are being dismissed. We walk into local gatherings and we're the only woman there and everybody just shuts up and looks at the door. Like they've never seen, you know. It's, uh, but we had the internet then and we were talking and we started realizing that the more we talked to other women, that they were going through it too. That they were seeing it, they were experiencing it and you know what? We didn't have to. We could do something about it. So we started organizing. And I know I'm not you know, doing like a level 101. These are all the absolutely details that happened because I'm kind of assuming that pretty much anyone in here with the elevator joke early knows the chain of events. And I want to talk a little bit about what Richard Dawkins' Dear Ms. Lima letter did to the movement. It, by being dismissive and by being patronizing and condescending and, and uh, basically jerkish uh, to concerns, it gave legitimacy to the harassment and the dismissal that was already going on. And he had a ton of followers. And since he was dismissive of it, why not everybody else? You know, those concerns. I don't see any evidence of sexism. It's never bothered me, says the man. Um, so there was another big upheaval. I, call it, I actually like to call it the second wave denialisms, but uh, then we had, I, I think, one of the huge, huge turning points in all of this was women in secularism. I mean, this thing, it's actually, it's really what brought me to the moment, the movement and kept me was women in secularism. Um, just. CFI did an amazing thing with this conference. I mean, all the speakers being women. It's unheard of, it's never happened before. You know, finally we're here, we're talking about problems and people are listening to us talk about problems and the things that are um, concerning us and happening to us. And then Jen McCrate said this little thing about, you know, there's this um, kind of a back channel that whenever a woman gets invited to start speaking, that other women tell her, hey, stay away from that guy. You know, don't make sure you're not alone with this guy. And it was like the internet record screech, you know, where the needle just slipped and everybody went, what? And, it, and it's such an interesting concept because when I was in high school, we had the back channel of students going, no, don't get, don't, make sure you're not alone with that teacher because he's really handsy. I mean, it's a thing. It's a thing that all, almost all women experience. We all know. It's not like this is anything new. But since it was said you know, at, at this conference, in this woman-only space, it was a horrible thing. And a quick thing about woman-only spaces, um, it, it's very interesting that like Mothers Beyond Belief is an acceptable women's only space because they're still in their gender role. But if you have a woman in secularism, woman's only space, it's outside of the gender role, and that's a problem. Um, but getting back to, sorry, the, the we all knew. Um, gaming conventions, I work gaming conventions. This is where I met my husband. And yeah, let me tell you, there was, everybody knew the handsy people that you stayed away from, the vendors, the uh, guest speakers. Um, we uh, just, it was the thing. And what were you gonna do about it? Who were you gonna tell? You know, who were you gonna complain to? What were they gonna do? You know, after uh, Jen made this comment and things started coming up, everybody wanted to, well, name names. Okay, well, what are you gonna do if we name names? Ask us for evidence? Yeah, okay, here's my evidence that he grabbed my boobs when you weren't looking. 
but uh, I'm sorry I didn't get them fingerprinted. Um, so out of women and secularism, Secular Woman was born. The founders got together and realized that uh, people weren't listening to the women's voices. And by people, I don't mean everybody, but there were a lot of people not hearing women speak. So we needed an organization that would help that out. And that's what we're, we're about. We are, our primary goal is to amplify the voice and presence of uh, non-religious women in the movement, without the movement, everywhere. We have uh, some great campaigns that we're running. Um, I'm sure you've seen the Abort Theocracy shirts at the table, which we still have a few left I don't want to take home. Um, and that is directed right at the anti-choice legislation that's been passed by the religious right. We have our shameless campaign um, that started in July. It was supposed to be a month-long campaign and it's still running. It's women telling their abortion stories um, to get the information because we shouldn't be shamed for it. We run Twitter chats on sex education. Um, we've done Sexual Assault Awareness Month, uh, Crisis Pregnancy Center Awareness on National Day of Reason. All things on social media that, and uh, you know, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, we are trying basically to give women voice and get their voices heard. Things that we're trying to do to help get us past a lot of the issues that we're facing. Um, do, 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 do. We've done grants. We've worked with uh, Surly, Ram, uh, Surly Ramix a lot. Uh, Amy Davis Roth is wonderful. Uh, we've done sponsorships of other organizations, stopabuseonline.org. Um, humanist homeschoolers help. They were looking for money for a library for to um, kind of an inner homeschooling not the bad kind of homeschool library. <laughs> we gave out annual awards recognizing um, various members and people. Uh, the Blog of the Year Award was Almost Diamonds. It's excellent. It was uh, users, uh, member voting. And we also work really hard to promote other programs that we see sort of kind of not really getting the attention that we think they should get. The Women's Leadership Project run by Sakivu Hutchinson out of LA. She works with um, humanist girls and women in LA high schools. And it's, it's a great, I mean, they have so much to work through and so much uh, headbutting. And uh, it's, it's an excellent program that's in danger of being cut because of funding. We've written letters, we've tried to do fundraising, just trying to promote them to get the information out. And different other people have been taking steps too, whether with Secular Women or without. Um, the harassment policies at, at uh, conferences, I know Stephanie's van was uh, really, really uh, integral to a lot of that and getting in so many organizations have put them in place now, which is fabulous. Skeptics, uh, Amy's series on speaking out against hate directed at women by uh, male leaders in the in the movement was great. I I don't know how many she had total. I think I counted like ten before I was running out of time to get my speech ready. Um, conferences, you know, we're up to women and secularism three next year, which is awesome. Ireland had an empowering women through secularism conference this year. The Feminine Faces of Free Thought by Women in Reason. You know, I mean, conferences aimed at women's issues in the movement. These are wonderful, wonderful things. Um, local organizations are having women's only night, women's only meetings. So, you know, they can actually get a few words in instead of being talked over a lot. Because I know that happens a lot because I go to a local organization too and I have to have to really yell to be heard. And it's not that anybody's even trying to do anything to shut women up, it's just kind of our culture. We're used to talking over women, and I say we in the, you know. Um, so there's a lot left to do, though. And what can you do? Talk, communicate. That's one of the biggest things secular women does. We communicate, we're getting the word out, we're having the conversation, we're bringing up the incidents to light, we're telling people, be aware of it. And then you can also listen. 
I know it's a really tough concept for a lot of us. I'm a bad listener, but listening when, when women are talking, telling you this is what I'm experiencing, this is what's going on. Um, organization elections, your local organization. If you see a woman in your organization, Greta, I think, was talking about this last night, ask her to run for something. You know, get them involved, get them on the officer level and not just a secretary, really. They can do other things. They can lead organizations too. And confront acts of sexism. When you see, you know, your buddy is making that stupid rape joke, point it out to him, that's a stupid rape joke. <laughs> um, don't make excuses for harassment because nobody ever, ever asks for it, ever, ever. I mean that, not even, you know, short skirt ever. But basically, keep talking, keep the conversation going. Because as Lieutenant General David Morrison said, the standard we walk by is the standard we accept. And it lasted 24 minutes, I'm okay with that. Thank you. <laughs>